My name is Valerie Johnson of Flying Cow Creations. Today I'm going to show you some of the basics in felting. Now felting is a binding of wool fibers together to make a fabric. And there are two types of felting, wet felting and dry felting. Um, we're going to talk about dry felting today, which is also known as needle felting. Now what you start with is wool. So right here, we have a picture of what wool looks like, raw wool, right off the sheep. And you can see there's fibers in it and different um, bits of uh, fluff, and it's got the lanolin, so it's more oily. After it has been cleaned and carded, meaning it's been brushed so that it's in the nice bits, then you would have, um, it would look more like this. We have two types of wool that we can get for the needle felt. Bat and roving. Bat shows all the fibers running in different directions making a sheet. Roving is when the fibers have been combed so the fibers are running in one direction making kind of a rope. When you're looking for the wool you will see different types and usually the types like Coradale is what we often use to needle felt and that's generally the breed of the sheep. So we have things like uh, Lester which is a nice curly locks if you're making uh, Santa heads. We've got Wensleydale, it's a very nice soft uh, long lock curly fiber. Um, this is Romney, which is a more coarse wool and it's kind of in a roving here. We also have alpaca, which you can felt with. Alpaca is very fine, so when you, you, when you needle felt it, you'll need a smaller needle. Um, then you can also felt things like cat hair, and this is a ragdoll cat and um, it has very nice soft fur that can be felted as well. Um, you have coarse wools like Coradale and then you have finer wools like Merino and this is a Merino bat. Usually when you're wanting something close to your skin you want a softer or finer wool so it doesn't feel itchy. Um, now what makes wool felt are the, full, the wool fibers themselves have little scales on them and those scales act as barbs and they move one direction. So the more you get them to move, they'll latch together and bind and become the felt. To help that um, occur with dry wool, we have special needles. These special needles are very sharp and along the edges, they are triangular shaft with little nicks along the edge of the needle. Those nicks grab a hold of the fibers so that when I poke those fibers into a piece uh, of wool, they stick. And so let me take a little piece here. This is wool, fiber, wool fabric. So when you poke into them, you can see the fibers come through the fabric and they latch into place. Now your uh, needles come in different gauges. Your finest needle is a 40 gauge, and that's for very small or finer fibers and um, detail work. One of your workhorses of needle felting would be a size 38. Also triangular shaft. There's also a 38 star, and the star shape helps um, when you um, show, uh, when you poke into the fibers, you're not going to notice the holes as much when you use a star. Then a 36 needle is when you're doing much more coarse and some overall felting um, into a sculpture. Kind of like here I have an armature and so I might use a 38 to work on the core wool. Then you have specialty needles like a spiral. The spiral is a neat uh, needle. It has not only the nicks along the edge, it also is twisted so that every time you poke it knots up those fibers even quicker. Now when you felt, you can felt on a variety of items. You can felt wool into itself. So you can see here, I've made a felted ball and then I've made a design on it. And this ball is created just by felting right into itself. Or you can felt into like a wool fabric like this. You can see this little fox, that's on a wool fabric. You can also felt on cotton. So here's a piece of cotton and I'll take
like a little piece of wool. Now when you felt, you don't want to push your needle in and move the needle laterally because these are very brittle needles and they could break. And you're also better moving from the wrist instead of trying to do this because if you get hit with these, they hurt. So you can see how the fibers have gone through on cotton. I like to felt also on my own wool that I created by wet felting, which we'll discuss another day. And then you can take spill. Now what you can see I'm doing is I kind of gather those threads at the edge so I get a smoother line. And you can see that it's latched through. Now if you've got a large piece and a lot of felting to do, I'll show this one. I used a novelty yarn and an old wool blend sweater that I cut out and put on this wool. You might want to use a multi-tool and they can hold six needles or one like this that hold 12. And this will help just speed the process so you can get the job done much quicker. And you can see how the wool has worked through and then it binds to the fabric. The other item that you will need is foam. Because these are sharp needles, you cannot do this on a table. You would break them. So the kind of foam you might use, you can go to the fabric store and get uh, upholstery foam. Sometimes when you pack electronics or pack, unpack a box, you can find uh, a nice dark foam that will work well too. Or you can go to um, a store that sells like swim noodles or kickboards and you can get that kind of foam um, to make your foam pad. They all work well. And um, that would be your basic things that you would need for needle felting your needles, your wool, and your foam pad, and then you're ready to begin. Thank you.